Well, somebody bless the Lord one more time. Amen. Just say hallelujah. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Give God some praise. Amen. It's the 11 o'clock hour. And we are coming together on one accord to just let God have his way on today. And certainly we do thank God for his mercies, his grace. We thank God for all of you who have logged in. And even for those who are here at the sanctuary, we greet you all in divine love. Greater, we love you. We thank God for you. Family, friends, and those who are under the sound of my voice, we greet you all in the name of Jesus. Well, we're excited today. We're excited today because we have a woman of God who's going to come and share the word. Of course, she is not a stranger to any of us, but she is a daughter of the house. I speak of none other than Minister Evelyn Graham. Amen. And God has put a word in her heart, in her spirit, and on her lips. And she's going to share what God has given her. But right before she comes, let us now receive our devotional team with our scripture and prayer. And after our devotional team, the next voice you'll hear will be none other then Minister Evelyn Graham, all the way from Dubak, Louisiana. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Good morning. Our scriptural reading will be coming from Psalms 105 in the New King James Version. And it reads, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face forevermore. And the word of the Lord is already blessed, true, and tried. If I can give uh, a quick word this morning, the Lord put on my heart to, to let someone know that uh, no matter what you're going through, mm. no matter your situation, mm. that if you're still here, you're still breathing, you're a part of his plan, yes. and that he hasn't forgot about you. Yes. And I just want to let someone know that, uh, whoever it may be, mm. but God is with you, he loves you, 
And I just want to share that quick word before we look to the Lord. Amen. Let, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we bless you. But one more time, oh God. Father, we come with humble hearts this morning, oh God. Thank you for a new day, oh God. Father, we thank you that your mercies are new each morning, oh God. Father God, we thank you right now for the word that's going to go forth, oh God. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus that somebody, mind and heart, uh, receive or does say of the Lord, oh God. That they may want to know more about you, oh God. And Father God, we lift up all those who don't know you this morning. All those who are lost, oh God, for they are the sheep of your pastor, Lord. They need you right now, Lord God. And we pray that your word, oh God. It, it draws them in, oh God, that they, they may uh, take heed to your word and be not only uh, hearers but doers, oh God. Yes, Father God, we thank you for the, the woman of God that's going to bring your word, oh God. We ask that you bless and sanctify this service, oh God. Yes, and Father, we come right now with our hands lifted up. Yes. Lord God, to give you glory, to thank you, oh God. Yes. Lord, you are truly wonderful and you are worthy to be praised. Yes. Father God, now in the name of Jesus, as we prepare to close this prayer. Father God, we say thank you, we love you, and we give you all honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. I greet you in the name of love. Hallelujah. Thank God. It is a blessing to be here today. And scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Amen. God has been something about some benefits when we begin to trust and have faith in God. And like Minister Dean said, I don't know what you're going through today, but just understand God is still in control. Amen. Give him some praise this morning anyway, because when I come up into situations and I don't know what I'm going to do, I have to trust God. I begin to think about what I'm going through. Then I begin to think about what it could be. And it make me grateful for what it is now. Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. God is able. God is able to keep us this morning. There's a word from God this morning, and I would just like to share it with you. Amen. God is good all the time. Thank God for being here. Come with me, if you will, to Joshua 24, chapter 24, verses 14 through 15. And the word of God says, now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day, not tomorrow, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, right of the gods of the Amorites, whose land ye dwell. Whoa. But now as for me mm. and my house, yeah. we will serve the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And for a topic this morning, I will use, it's time to choose. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, we come to you this morning, dear God, grateful and thankful yes. that you are a faithful God. Yes. Lord, we lift up everything to you, dear God. You know, dear God, because you are all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing God. Bless every household right now, dear God, that's represented here. Lord, we thank you for your presence, dear God, not only here, dear God, but every house opened in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for this opportunity, dear God. I thank you for this opportunity to stand before your presence, dear God, before your people, dear God, with your word. Now lift your word up, dear God, and not me, that ears will hear, dear God, your word and what you say to your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. It's time to choose. Amen. Now, have you ever heard of the quote, those who stand for nothing fall for anything? Mm -hmm. Now, this was supposedly to have been written by Alexander Hamilton. He was George Washington's former military aide and a very well-known, renowned financer. And he was appointed the first secretary of the treasury and thus became the architect of the structure of that department. He was an American statesman, he was a politician, he was a legal scholar, military commander, lawyer, banker, and a businessman. Now no doubt during all of these occupations and opportunities that he observed some unsurety, some doubt, some wavering, some uncertainty, some questionable situations among his colleagues and surrounding endeavors. And now, no doubt, there were many times he felt that the feelings or opinions, things that they should have known about because of their knowledge, should have been more certain, definite, positive, fixed, secure, assured, stabilized, without compromise. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen? Now, this quote is over 200 years old. But yet and still, we're able to use the same quote today yeah. in this time and in this era. Yeah. Yes, every day we make choices, big and small. Yeah. But it's a wonderful thing to know to that any moment, 
we have the choice to make a choice. You have the freedom, you have the ability, and you have the power to choose what to do and how to live your life. Yes, yes. Choice is one of the greatest gifts we get from life. Yeah. Yes, it sounds easy, but now it can be one of the hardest things in the world to do. To make a choice, then live with it. Because the choices you make create your life. They make you who you are. They exhibit your morals, your values, your wisdom, and your character. They are your present, future, and your destiny. Now, there are different kind of choices. Some are fundamental. Those are absolute choices, crucial choices, important, and choices that should be first and essential. Yes, yes. Then there are instrumental choices, mm -hmm. helpful and useful choices. And then there are detrimental choices, mm -hmm. damaging choices, yes. harmful choices, mm -hmm. hurtful choices, unprofitable choices. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Now, as we move forward into this dating world of entertainment industry, corrupt political episodes, mm -hmm. new laws, hidden agenda, as well as exclusive gender reforms, has been widening the gap for choice. Yeah. Exploiting the minds and building up anything and everything that is contrary to God's divine creation. Yeah. Amen? It's time to choose. We're at the crossroad and we have a choice. I said we're at the crossroad and we have a choice to make. Amen? On this Christian journey and religious journey, it is every day diverging always and everywhere. Every day something is changing, big or small, high and low. Every day you can look for some kind of change. But now understand that there's only two de de uh, destinations. Yeah. Either we're moving toward God, toward life, mm -hmm. joy, and happiness, or we're moving away from God. Mm -hmm. Try hatred, enmity, and misery. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6 and 24 says, no man, mm -hmm. no man can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. He's gonna, his will is going to either lean one way yeah. or another. Whatever spirit man you decide to feed is the one that is going to take control. Amen. 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 The most important choice we can make today is to allow Jesus Christ, Son of God, your, to be your Lord and Savior in your life and in this fallen world. Amen. 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 Now Christ's atonement, his reparations, he paid for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. It says that I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That means with an overflow. Yeah, yeah not, not just what we need. Yeah. He'll give us an overflow. Yeah. Amen? Amen? More than enough. Yeah. But before me, and he says, now the enemy comes to steal, heal, and destroy. Hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. God gives us the perfection. The words say God will perfect. That, that's concerning his people. We belong to God. So whatever is considered with us, God will perfect it. Amen. We don't have to turn to man to perfect it. We can turn to our holy living God to perfect the things that are concerning us. Amen. Now let's look at these verses. Joshua in chapter 24, you remember Joshua. He was one of uh, two one of the two that made it out of the Egyptian wilderness. Only two made it. And, and they made it out and survived the Egyptian journey and that they went into because of the fullness of God of their obedience. Yeah. Yeah. They served God with the fullness. Yeah. They trusted God with their hearts yeah. and their minds. So they were the only two. The others were destroyed out of the wilderness of Egypt. So let's look at Joshua here. Joshua now was the leader of God's people. Moses had died and he had been put in position. Amen. 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 Joshua had fought many battles because of God's victory, giving him the victory to do so. And he felt that now at this time he was at the end of his life. And being a genuine leader, somebody say a genuine leader, how about a genuine leader of God's people. He wanted to enlighten, exhort, and encourage them yeah. to love the Lord and serve him only. Yeah. He wanted to renew the covenant. Yeah. 
and remain separated from the world. Amen. Somebody say it's time to choose. It's time to choose. Now notice that the chapter states not only were the people called together in Shechem, but elders, leaders, judges, and their officers. Now, why? First, they were, first of all, they were influential positions. And they were the ones that was going to be governing God's people. You do know they fall too, huh? Uh, so they need the word of God also. God charges them more than he charges us. Amen. So it's very important for the leaders to be governed by God. So he called the leaders that was going to be leading God's people. God's people, it was of significant importance that they were summoned. Do you remember Samuel and Eli? Samuel appointed his sons as judges. They took bribes. They ruled unethically and perverted justice. They were self-assault, wanted to hear what they wanted to hear, wanted to give people what they wanted to hear, and they pleased themselves. Amen. 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 Proverbs 29 and 4 say, By justice a king builds up the land, but he who exacts gifts tears it down. Amen. Amen. Somebody say choose. It's time to choose. It's time to choose. Amen. Amen. Now Joshua here took three steps to awaken God's people. First, he reminded them of who they were. Amen. See, we got to remember who we are in Christ. He reminded them who they were and how they arrived to what they do have now. Amen. Sometimes we forget along the way. Yeah, sometimes we forget. So he first of all started to tell them who you were and how God, through, through the scriptures, showed them and made a way for them and brought them out in and out of bondage, amen, amen. to the land of milk, of, milk and honey, amen. of unusual fertility amen. and abundance. Yeah, having things that their hands did not even labor for. Amen. Tell somebody, tell God, thank you, amen. 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 Didn't have to labor for it. Talking about the blessings of heaven promised by God. Amen. Psalm 103 says, know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. Ephesians says 2 and 8, but it was by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. James 1 and 7 tells us every good thing. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. There is no shadow of turning or darkness in God. Amen. Maybe with people, but not in God. Amen. It, it, it means he, he don't have a, a certain method or he don't have a motive other than love in doing. You know, sometimes people have a dark side. Oh, and, and, and they have a motive for doing what they do. But there's no darkness in God. Amen. God is faithful. First Corinthians 9, 1 and 9 says God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, our Lord, bringing us into a new life, being a light under our feet, a bridge over troubled waters, mm -hmm. keeping us from dangers yeah. and unseen yeah. dangers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And this is what he was telling them. This is where you come from, and this is how you got here, and God is good, and, and don't think, don't, don't get it twisted like you got here on your own, yeah. and it was all in your power, and what you accomplished, and all, this had nothing to do with you, but it was all in the hands of God, amen, and the same thing with us today. So, secondly, he began to tell them, fear the Lord, and serve him with sincerity, wholeheartedly the truth. You know, sometimes we want to half serve God. Just do enough to get us by. Like when we was in school. You know, sometimes I just studied enough just to get by with a test. Sometimes I made it, sometimes I didn't. But see, when we serve God, we need to serve him whole. We need to bring it all to the altar and leave it. Amen? We need to serve God wholeheartedly and truth. Proverbs 9 and 10 say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You think you smart, just start serving the Lord wholeheartedly and watch the wisdom that he began to store in you. Amen. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Amen. Amen. Number, uh, also in number two, it goes that Joshua then, knowing the hindrances of his people, the things that they tempted to hold back. The hidden sin. 
the baggage brought along, mm -hmm. the closet keepers, mm -hmm. the false and strange gods mm -hmm. that they were holding on to. Mm -hmm. wow. Roots needed to be dug up. Because he realized they were only deceiving themselves. You know, sometimes we think we're fooling somebody. We may, people may not see it, but God does. And the enemy knows it. So he's just fooling us to make us think we're getting away. When it's really pulling us farther and farther away from God. Getting us out of the will of God. That's why we have, that's why Paul say, check yourself. And nobody else will have to do it. Amen. Yes, I'm talking about a faithful God. He saw them possibly in backsliding and doing some of these things. See, Joshua knows there was a bit of Egypt still clinging to the sandals of his people. Yeah, just like some of us, there's a little bit of that world stuff still in us, you know, and it happens. But God is good. He gives us a way out. Amen. He gives us a way out. Amen. He gives us a way out. So Joshua then informs them to put away these gods. Now, see, this is where they'll start talking about your men. Oh, it's all right as long as he's telling us how to serve. But now when they start telling us now to put away this and put away that, they met and That's when some want to stop coming to church. Wow. Some want to start talking about the church. Yeah. Because now you're getting too personal. See, you don't forgot you're supposed to be a holy people. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. yeah, ain't nobody told you. You don't hear that word no more. You don't hear it no more. So you don't got comfortable in your position. Amen. See, we're supposed to be a holy people. And that's what we're supposed to be striving. We done got too comfortable in this thing. Amen. We got to go back to what God said. Yeah. We done got too comfortable. Amen. He tells them to put away their false gods. Some of the things that they had was little bitty trinkets, you know, from the little cities they done passed through. Uh, country, they brought back to them. I mean, some of the, the little uh, hope gods were mental things, you know, keeping this in your mind. Folks telling you this and that and you believing it. Amen. Yeah. The, it's all kind of gods. Uh, First Lady had us reading the book, Guards at War. And you would be surprised of how many gods we serve when we're not serving the real and true God for what he is. Amen. You got to watch that. Amen. Amen. He told them to put it away because he was understanding. He wanted them to understand this kind of stuff puts snares in your life. Amen. Amen. Traps in your life. Scourges where God will punish you for them. Yes. And thorns in your life. Now, sometimes in spite of all we intend to do, out of all we intend to do, temptation will lurk. And if it's entertained long enough, it will cause you to activate and move you further from the things of God, of pleasing him. It's no secret. It's used more than once. How David entertained looking at Bathsheba. Entertained it looking at it. See, when we start seeing things pulling us and drawing us and we know it's not of God, don't sit up and think you're stronger than that spirit because that spirit knows you too. And that spirit knows how to, how to change its identity. What is that, like a chameleon? Or whatever it is that changes its color and ease up on you when you know anything, it done grabbed you and snatched you. And you don't know how you got there. Amen. Elder Graham said sin will take you further than where you want to go. Yes, sir. Just keep playing with it. You better find a way to get out of that thing. And Jesus is the way. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 27 say, neither, neither give place to the enemy. We must stop making ourselves available in ways that compromise our relationship with God. Looking at things on TV. Now, it may sound simple, but now you got certain things you don't want your children to see on TV. But you figure like you can handle it. Amen. Amen. And the first thing is, if you're, if you're working on your change, you got to know you got to change your atmosphere. Amen. You got to change that first. And God will do the rest. He'll start changing that desire. Things you used to do. You don't want to do it no more. Yeah. Huh? But then when you get to start getting criticized or whatever, you're ready to play with it again. And that's one of the dangerous things you can do is to go back into something God has pulled you out of. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. We must stop making ourselves available, compromising our relationship and our walk with God. TV, music, conversations. You ever been holding a conversation with people? And then all of a sudden it goes to the left? Let me tell you something. Some people know what you stand for. They'll go to the left for a reason. Huh? Yeah, you got to understand the trick of the enemies and the doors that the devil throw. They'll go to a conversation for a reason to see how long you're going to stand there. Yes, sir. They do it every day. Yeah, but you better stand on the word of God. Yeah, they'll change them conversations on you. 
But you don't have to be in the midst of it. If they don't like what you stand for, you, you're free to go. You don't have to stand there and listen to it. You don't even have to be a, a, a part of it. Amen? Yeah. I'm just telling you, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Number three, David said, let's choose now. He tell, okay, let's choose. If it seems evil, if it seems bad, if it seems so worse, and that goes for us too. If this thing seems so bad and worse, nerve-wracking, unvaluable to serve the Lord, if you can't find anything to praise God for, this day, not tomorrow, this day, you need to choose right now. You need to make a decision. Whether you want to go back to your old ways of serving idols, gods of your fathers, way back then, the land that he pulled Abraham out of and gave Abraham a new life, like he's done to us. Amen. Do you have that desire to go back? Or do you want to serve the ones right here? Since you left some Amorites here and some that still serve idol gods. You, you don't have to go very far. You're exposed to some right here. You name it. What is it you really want to do? You need to decide. See, we don't want to be like the bridesmaids who left going to get some oil. Yeah. And when they came back, it was too late. Yeah. Somebody say it, you got to choose. You got to choose where you're sitting up thinking you got time. You don't know the time or the hour. Yeah. Don't play with God. Amen. Don't play with God. You need to choose. Amen. You don't want to be a lukewarm servant. I know sometimes when we go, my niece, uh, she loves half and half. And I had to find out what half and half. But we don't want to be a half and half servant. Yeah. Amen. Come on, half and half tea. Half of this, half lukewarm. Warm. Yeah. 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 Stuck in the middle. You know, it's getting out. Ain't no middle. You either either, either or you are. They making you choose. Amen. You got to decide what side, you, what you going to stand for. And be ready. But whatever consequences, because God said we're going to have them because of our choices. So we need to be building up ourselves. Amen. God is an awesome God. Elijah even told them in Kings, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord God is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then you follow him. This came after Joshua. So you know they were still doing the same thing. Amen. Even after in the scripture 24, when they were saying, oh, we're going to serve God. we going to thank God. Somebody needs to say thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You choose. Joshua then made a personal and passionate and permanent and bold decision without hesitation or tiptoeing. You know, sometimes we be ready to talk about the Lord and how good he's done to us and how we going to stick with him. We want to sit up and tiptoe around wondering who's around us. I think Paul had to get on Peter one time. Peter was supposed to be teaching the people and certain people come up and, and he was under the influence that they was ever, ever did it better to take something from him. And Paul had to tell him, hey, what are you preaching? Either you're going to preach God or you're going to preach something else. We don't change because of people. We need to be bold Christians telling what God has said. Amen. We don't suppose to change. Amen. We don't have to tiptoe. So Joshua told them passionate. And see, this was a, that's why it is God is your personal savior. Jesus is on the scene. He's your personal savior. Now, no longer do they have to go through the priest have to do it for you. You can go to Jesus yourself. Amen. Yes, you do. As for me and my house, he said, we will serve the Lord. Joshua's relationship was not based on any man. He didn't sit up and worry about what a man say. He let him know, don't come to me with no foolishness. You can serve who you want to serve. I know who I stand for. I see what God has done for me. And so if you don't want to serve him and it's unvaluable to you, then you go on further. But as for me and my house, and he said that with boldness, we will serve the Lord. Amen. But it wasn't based on man. He served God no matter what. Now Joshua had been general through many years. He fought hostile tribes with God. Seen the walls of Jericho fall yes, with God. Yes, yes. Have your walls, have you seen God knock down some walls in your life? Yes. Have you seen God to make some things tumble down right before? Yes. The scriptures say he'll prepare a table before you in the presence 
of your enemy. Amen. Tell God, thank you. Yeah, he's knocked some walls down in my life. Amen. And he bears the scars as well as the wisdom and the faith that grows deeper with every struggle. See, the things we go through, we're the, the, the clay and he's the pot. Even if the devil throws it on us, if we turn it around, God said, if you turn it around, I'm going to bring it out for your good. If you perceive that I'm with you, I'm going to bring this thing out for your good. Amen. And he'll do it. So we need to stop compromising and take God at his word. We're in a spiritual warfare now. Amen. God's word tells us to renew our minds, not be conformed to this world. We've been delivered and Jesus still saves. Whatever we go through, he is still with us. Jesus came to our rescue because he understood we couldn't do it on our own. I don't care what school you went to, what you know, and how you know. We can't save ourselves. Amen. We have to go to Jesus even when we messed up. We have to regret it. Be remorseful of it. And repent. Amen. And that's a word you don't hear often either, like holy. Yeah. We, we be regretful because we done got caught. But what about repenting? That's when it's a personal choice. You got to tell God, go to God for yourself. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, remove this from me. He'll do it. He will do it. Just trust him. Trust him for who he is. Amen. Trust him for who it is. Don't let the perverted, callous, distorted, unwise decision and choices that are daily available destroy or infiltrate the values and the morals God has instilled with you. He's an all-knowing, all-seeing, a powerful God. There's nothing hidden from him. Nothing. Whatever weakness we have, Philippians says his grace is sufficient for you. For his strength is made perfect in the weakness. Stand on the truth. Stand on God's word. Stand on righteousness. Stand if you got to stand by your... It may get lonely sometimes. But stand if you got to stand by yourself. It'll be worth it. We have given, been given God's holy word for preparation and wisdom. It is a lamp unto our feet and what he expects of a holy people. God give us a lamp. He give us his word to walk by. Amen. Now some would try to change you and tell you to think out the box. You know, the devil came to Jesus and say, just make these, you know you're hungry. Make these stones in the bread and it, it'll be all right. He came to Jesus and say, jump off this building. You know your angel's going to come and save you. Yeah, that's how the devil get to us. Mm -hmm. Come on and worship me. And you'll have all this. He forgot everything belonged to him anyway. And maybe he didn't know. Amen. Praise God. But all I can tell you that now, that if you're tired of the darkness, and things do get dark, especially nowadays. You Sometimes you wake up, you're feeling like you're all by yourself. You're wondering, Lord, what's going on? But if you're tired of the darkness, start to follow the sun. The S-O-N, yes, yes. Amen? The S-O-N. And as much as we would like and desire to see all people saved and come into the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Christ and make Christ this choice to set them free and to give them peace that surpass all human understanding or to allow the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, comfort, and teach them, some people will still rebel. We may not understand it. Some will still rebel. But Proverbs 1 and 6 say some will despise wisdom and instruction. And I didn't put the word there, but the Bible calls them fools. Some people will be foolish enough to not want to hear the word. Amen? Amen. But you must encourage yourself. Choose to come before the Lord with, in his presence with thanksgiving. Choose to serve the Lord with gladness. Choose to saturate your mind with the goodness of God and all he's done for you. Choose to read the word of God. Amen. And choose it daily. That way you'll know what time you're living in. You'll know what season you're living in. Because this time is ushering you in you into another era. And you need to know what era you're in. You need to know what medication you need to take. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to know what scriptures you need. You need to know the word of God to help bring you through. Our only hope is in Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. 
And if he's not the center of your life, something else is. You choose. Amen. Amen. I pray you've been blessed by this Amen. message. God is good and he's good all the time. And scripture says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen.